Attack on Titan Final Season Episode 9 Welcome to Paradise Island, dear hostage. Please choose Tea with Devils or Death by Titans. I think we shall have some tea then. Welcome back everyone. I'm your friendly horse with a funny accent and today we're going to talk about everything important in this episode, only with zero spoilers for anime watchers. This episode packed a lot of information and I will explain everything today and also provide actual dates in the left corner of your screen. We also have mentions of a secret plan, some new friends to meet and also a very strange scene in front of the mirror. All of that and much more are coming right up. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and enable all notifications. Also, if you want to talk to me and other fans, don't forget to check out my Discord server. Just a fair warning, sometimes I sing in the audio chat and that can't be pretty. But for now, let's go to our episode covering chapters 106 and parts of 107 in the manga. The first thing to notice in this chapter is actually Armin, our narrator, but this time he is telling the story to someone. Hmm, I wonder who that might be. His story starts three years ago, when times were a bit more fun. Right from the start, here are some things you need to know. These are the island devils, also called Paradisians. They are Eldians and they are loyal to the safety of their island. These are Marleyan soldiers. They are loyal to Marley. They are not Eldians and they seek the founding titan. These are the anti marleyan volunteers. They are scattered from different countries that had former conflicts with Marley. They are not Eldians, but they are also not loyal to Marley. In fact, they claim they seek salvation for Eldia by working against Marley. They are led by Yelena. She came in one of the ships that arrived on Paradise in order to search for the previous missing ships. This happened across the time skip, and across three years, the scouts took over every single ship. Yelena proved their loyalty by killing the guard on their ship, and later on by sharing strategic information with the government of Paradis. She and Union Coupon also shared new weapon designs that will, later on, be adjusted also for the ODM gear. That all been going around since they arrived on the island in the year 851. We also learned that the island is now cleared from titans. The scouts killed all of them in the course of one single year. That really impresses Yelena. And that is very understandable. For us and the scouts, killing titans is a regular thing. But for someone outside of the island, meeting a titan is a nightmare. And Yelena understands now how dangerous the scouts are if they manage to do all of that without the weapons they have on the outside world. But that fact is also a big problem, because the titans that Marley been sending all those years were also the reason why Marley couldn't reach the island. This is very ironic. Titans were the main enemy to humanity in the first seasons, and now we know that titans inside the walls protect the people from threats, while the titans on the island have been protecting them from the world. No one predicted something like the scouts or the ODM will rise out of this situation. But now that Paradise is cleared from Titans and Marley is done with the war, the people of Paradise are in danger once again. That is the reason the volunteers are not getting off this island anytime soon. And that is also why three years later, Armin destroyed the arbor and Eren took down the military top. This was in order to buy more time, but it did come at a price of killing a lot of people. Probably one of the most important things the Elena delivered was a letter from Zeke, claiming to have a secret plan, a plan that will save all Eldians and involves a titan with royal blood and the founding titan residing inside of Eren. Eren finally confirms this to his friends, that he knows how he activated his power on that day when he punched Dina's titan. He knows that he could activate the rumbling by coming in contact with Zeke, which is of course Dina's son. But if you remember, for us, this is no big news because we saw it back in season 3. And indeed, back then, Eren didn't say anything about it to not put Historia at risk for having royal blood. And welcome back Queen Historia for her first appearance on the final season. Now there is Zeke and his plan, so Historia is safe. And Paradis needs to decide if they can trust the Beast Titan. In order to buy more time, they decided to use the volunteers to trick other ships into the island and keeping them captive on Paradis, and by that, preventing them to report back to Marley. With every ship arriving, the scouts went with a friendly approach, and in time, they were able to win over the support of a lot of people from Marley. 
These people, along with the volunteers, have helped the scouts improve Paradis technologically in those three years, by helping them to build an arbor and even a train on the island. We need to remember that technology that seems old to us, like the steam engine for example, was actually groundbreaking to the people of the island. And that is why Hanji is just going crazy. But there is something else to remember. Even though a lot of people became friendly with the people of the island, they are still basically hostages. So naturally, a lot of people will question their true loyalty. And we will talk more about that in a few minutes. Also, we have another confirmation about the Colossal Titan's ability to control his explosive power. And unlike the devastating blow in Liberio in the year 854, we can see that Armin can control his explosion with minimal damages in the year 851. We also saw it when Bertolt transformed on top of the wall. Gods With the arrival of so many new people, the scouts get to see some different types of faces. And even Sasha being a little bit racist, asking on Yon Kupon about his skin color. Of course, she is not trying to be offensive, Sasha simply has curiosity and behavior of a child sometimes, so I don't think Onya Kupon was offended, but it did raise a very significant point. In his conversation with the scouts, we get to the discussion about gods in our story. First, we have Ymir, the ancestor of all Eldians. But Onyan Kupon believes in another god. He doesn't say that Ymir was not real, but he believes that she got her power from his god. He also adds that he thinks that every person should decide to believe in what they choose to believe. Good job being politically correct. Another god mentioned in this episode is Zeke, which is a god in the eyes of Yelena. He was her savior, and she is extremely devoted to him. Also, in season 3, Rod Race also referred to the founding titan as god. So we have four different gods in Attack on Titan for now. This is important because it shows us that even in the world of Attack on Titan, there are different points of views regarding gods and their part in the history of the world. History changes according to who you ask, and different people that grew up in different places have different beliefs, just like in our world. So let me ask you, Anima Watchers. Who is the real god in Attack on Titan? And do you even think there is one? And of course, I'm not talking about your personal belief. I'm talking strictly about the situation in Attack on Titan. So think about that and let me know in the comments. The vibe on Paradise. The first thing to notice is a huge shift in colors. We get to see the vibrant colors of Paradise once again. This is a smart move of the anime, showing the clear difference in atmosphere between the war in the outside world and the peaceful life on Paradise. After all, Armin did say those were fine times back then. With so many new people on the island, we get to see the conflict on a smaller scale. We now see people of Paradise treat Marleyans exactly like Marley treats Eldians. But on the other hand, there are good people that see beyond that. That goes both ways, as we see Nicolo, who hated the island first, grows to love it, especially our beautiful Sasha that admired his cooking so much. And fun fact, a lot of people believe that Sasha's last word, Niku, which means meat, were actually meant to say Nicolo's name. Let me know if you like this idea because it seems like Nicolo really loved Sasha. We can see it just by looking at him beside her grave after the attack in the present time of the anime, the year 854. But like we mentioned before, the fact that all these soldiers are basically hostages is what makes the people of Paradise to not trust them completely. This is also why in year 854 we see Pixis and the soldier take the volunteers into custody. Although, we must admit that Pixis did it in the most respected way possible. Another thing that wasn't mentioned in the anime is that the volunteers were placed under the guard of Flock. More on that later. Speaking of different vibes, we can also see our group of friends having some conflict. Zeke has three more years to live. This is year 852, before they captured Zeke. Armin thinks that threatening the world with the rumbling will just make everyone hate them more. So maybe, if they can talk to them first, they can figure out this misunderstanding. But Eren raises a good point. There is no misunderstanding. The world sees them as monsters that can turn into titans. And that is actually true. Eren's view is basically saying that no matter how they try, they will never be able to convince the entire world they are not a threat simply by talking to them. Mikasa raises the point that a lot of Marley soldiers did join them after all, but like we mentioned before, Eren tells her that most of them might have joined them because they are captives. 
So, the best solution for them is to buy more time. And that's what led to this entire operation, to destroy the Arbor, so Marley won't be able to strike back soon, and to get Zeke to the island to hear his secret plan. From this point on, we jump back to our time in year 854. This is after the attack, and Armin asks himself if there wasn't any other way back then, a way that didn't involve killing all those people and also losing Sasha. He fought in New Eren more than anyone, and now he doesn't know anymore. Is Eren different somehow? And if so, then why? More on that in the upcoming episodes. Moving on, we go to the graveyard for a very important Connie moment. Standing over Sasha's grave, Connie tells us that she was like his twin. Losing her felt like losing half of himself. This is easily the saddest moment in this episode for me, and it will also impact Connie's future character development. Next, we get to see the Browse family coming to visit Sasha. They embrace Niccolo despite the fact that his nation killed their daughter. Imagine how hard it must be for this family to accept him, and imagine how hard it will be if they ever came across Gabby and Falco, which, by the way, are now having some quality time in the basements of Paradise. Next, we have Levi and Zeke on Paradise. Pay attention to those two, because trust me, they are going to have some of the most iconic and hilarious conversation on this entire show. Their dynamic is simply beautiful, and is translated to the anime even better. On one side we have Levi, who is dying to kill Zeke. But Levi, unlike other characters, is very restrained. But you need to remember that this is the man he promised Erwin he would kill. Erwin gave his life and so many others in exchange for the promise that Levi is going to kill him. You really need to appreciate his restraint here. On the other hand, you have Zeke that has a clever response to everything Levi tells him. Zeke keeps poking at Levi just enough to make him angry, but not as much that will get him killed on the spot. But Levi is actually very nice. He even arranged a fun hotel among the trees. A perfect place for ODM if the beast decided to try and escape. Back to Armin, he admits that they lost a chance for peace, but they had no other choice. Just like the warriors back then didn't have a choice when they attacked Shiganshina. And we can finally see who he was telling the story all this time. Annie Leonhardt first appearance in the anime after so many years. Welcome back, queen! And now, for a little easter egg. We have Mikasa and Eren. Mikasa is saying, if we lose we die, if we win we live while Eren, somewhere in front of the mirror, is saying, we can't win if we don't fight. 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 If this scene looked a bit familiar to you, then you have a good memory. And also, why did Eren say the word fight twice? So check this out. What Eren and Mikasa both are saying is actually what Eren told Mikasa back in the cabin when they were kids. Is Eren remembering that moment in front of the mirror? Is it something else? What do you think? And with Chad Aaron's new design, our extremely informative chapter comes to an end. Did you like it? And what was your favorite moment? Don't forget to tell me in the comments, and also come join my Discord server. We have channels for both anime watchers and manga readers, so everyone is welcome. Just before you go, smash that subscribe and like button to let me know you've enjoyed. Thank you all for joining me today, my titan loving friends. I will see you all real soon. And until then, don't forget to dedicate your hearts to humanity, inside and outside the walls.